Uh, hi, Polly. Thank you for your time today. I'm speaking with you from Toronto, Canada. Amazing. Well done. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're huge fans of The Crown, including myself. I know. Okay, I, great. I, I jump in the second I'm given my episode. So I'm I'm done. I'm all caught up. And congratulations. I have to ask you, Polly, when you get different actors to take on these roles, you know, with each season, obviously, they're getting older. Now you've obviously worked with uh, Elizabeth for a couple of seasons. What's the, you know, how do you kind of dive in to make sure that the older actor, I don't want to say old, but their actor, you know, inv- you know, takes on that, uh, that royal perfectly you sort of to be honest you kind of start at the beginning you know because it's there's a kind of weird like a double double thing where you're going can you play Claire Foy and the Queen can you play you know um, Emma Corrin and Princess Diana it's quite it's quite difficult because the more you look at people's bodies, the more, you know, we could both play the same character, but it would be completely different interpretations because of our own perception of our body, our own, you know, physicality, the length of our femurs are going to be different, you know, all of these things that everything sits a little bit differently. There are certain things that, um, of course, when I work with actors for a long time, I get a kind of shorthand. I, I understand somebody if they are impersonating, you know, not impersonating, if they are taking on the character that already exists, there are right. certain things that I understand and I will offer it and go, Emma found this useful. Does that work for you? Or could we look at this thing? Um, and how, what's the image that comes up for you? So Emma had, you know, laser beams, the idea of laser beams coming at her when she was at, in, um, sorry, coming at them when, uh, they were in in scenes like yes. with crowd, whereas Elizabeth, so much of the imagery for her was about the idea of like glitter and light walking into light, because that created a different energy in her body. So things yeah. things kind of change per person. But in, yeah, very interesting because I wanted to know, especially when you're working with um, Elizabeth for this last this past season. Um, and Diana, I mean, so iconic, but what is so iconic is the clothes, of course, that she wears. How does that influence the movement for an actor? Yeah, well, the, I mean, particularly for Diana, she was becoming known to be a fashion fashionista. You know, right. she's becoming known for how she looked. So actually, you can see the difference between, let's do it by seasons, but the difference between princess diana in season five and season six is that she's starting to really wear the clothes exactly. so it means that so we've got that scene where she's on the boat and she goes to the paparazzi and she presents herself whereas yes. you would never have seen princess diana doing that in season five she was all yeah. in the hoodies and the trainers and the short shorts and the sportswear because she was still working out how to be seen Whereas now, when suddenly the paparazzi are so much part of her everyday life, yeah. the idea of what she looks like changes and therefore the way that she carries herself changes. Yeah. How difficult was it for you to, I found it so hard to just relive these last four episodes and, and you know, it, it's got to be tough. That was a tough four episodes. Um, brilliant to watch and, and everybody was so good in it. But when you're recreating Diana's fur- funeral, and you see, you know, the boys walking behind that coffin. I mean, you got them to do that perfectly. How different is it when you're working with younger children and you have to coach them to do that almost perfectly to, you know, but not make it a parody or an imitation, you know? Yeah, nice. I'm glad you say that. It's um, It's about, you know, any time I'm working with an actor, no matter what age, it's to try and enable them to do things safely for both their body and their brain. So with the boys walking behind the the casket, it was focusing on the feeling of the crowd rather than the casket. The minute that you turn it into, with anything, the minute you go, imagine if your mother died, you know, that's it's, it's so different for everybody. So you're not always going to get the same effect as what you think you might get. But so I invited them to think about, I I can't remember which way around it was, but I think I had invited them to think of themselves as purple. 
that they were walking and they were all colored purple. So yeah. the idea that the crowd looked different than them and they were embarrassed of their own purpleness. Yeah. So they're playing, they're, they we're using imaginative language to change their body without adding an emotion to it. Um, so as well as the fact that they are beautifully costumed, costumed by the team, just as the boys were, which was wearing sort of slightly long suits, you know, their right. the costumes are a little bit too big. Um, so they're sort of acting as men. They're acting as their father. They're acting as their uncle. So I invited them on the day to look at, act like Dominic, act like um, you know, act like um, Diana's brother Charles, and and try yeah. um, and try and take on their their body language. So they've got different things than emotion, and that's really helpful for me and the team because we're not we're not inviting emotion. The audience will see that without us. Absolutely. Wow. Fascinating. My goodness. I wish I had an hour to talk to you. <laughs> you so much. And just what you've done, like with Rami Malek and Austin Butler, like congratulations on all of your work. You're amazing. We 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 take we don't get to talk to you that often. So I do thank you for your time. It's just fascinating to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Bonnie.